Thus far in our discussion on eukaryotic cells, we discuss single eukaryotic animal and plant cells. Now the question is, in animals, we usually have multicellular structures, so our cells basically combine to form multicellular organisms. The question is, how exactly do these eukaryotic animal cells actually connect to one another. Now in this lecture we're going to focus on this topic, we're going to discuss intracellular junctions or intracellular connections also known as cell junctions. So in animal cells there are three major types of connections or attachments, basically there are three major ways by which cells can connect to one another and these include tie junctions, gap junctions as well as desmosomes. So let's discuss what each one actually looks like, what it is composed of and what the function of each type of junction is and let's begin by examining the tie junction. So tight junctions basically form watertight seals or watertight connections between adjacent cells. And what this basically means is molecules and ions cannot actually get around cells. They must actually pass through that cell to get from one side, the lumen side, to the other side, our extracellular fluid side. So basically this means that in order for things like water to actually get past one side of the cell, the lumen cavity, to the other side of the cell, the extracellular fluid, something actually must pass through the cell membrane on the lumen side and to the cell membrane on the extracellular side. Now the apical side is the lumen side of the cell and this side is the basal lateral side. It's the side found on our extracellular side. Now tight junctions are composed primarily of a network of proteins known as claudin. So there are different types of claudin proteins. Now what exactly are the functions of the tie junction connection? So there are two major functions. Notice that each side of the cell, let's say on the lumen side, contains a certain type of integral proteins or certain types of integral proteins. And the basolateral side, this side, also contains its share of different types of integral proteins, proteins that basically allow the passageway of different types of ions and molecules. And what the tie junctions do, so this is one tie junction, this is the second type of uh, tie junction. What these tie junctions basically do is they do not allow the lateral movement of integral proteins from our apical side, the lumen side of the cell membrane to the basolateral side, the extracellular side of our cell membrane. Remember, inside an individual cell, inside the cell membrane, the phospholipids as well as the proteins are in a constant state of lateral motion. So our proteins can move around the cell. But when we have tight junctions, these integral proteins cannot actually go to this side of our cell membrane. And that's very important in basically controlling endocytotic and exocytotic processes. So our tight junctions blocks the lateral movement of integral proteins from the apical side of the cell membrane to the basolateral side of that cell membrane. This means or this makes sure that the proper endocytotic and exocytotic processes actually take place on the correct side. So on this side we usually have the, enso, the endocytotic process, on this end we usually have the exocytotic process. For example, if water actually wants to get in on the lumen side, it has to pass via our passive diffusion and then leave this side via once again passive diffusion. But if some other large molecule wants to get in, for example a sugar molecule, it has to actually get in through our integral protein on this side 
and then get out through another integral protein on the bottom side. So the other function of our tie junction is to control the movement of molecules and ions such as water and sugar molecules by only allowing a limited quantity to get into the cell on the apical side and out of the cell on the basal lateral side. This means that if a molecule such as a water molecule wants to actually get into the cell, it cannot move around the cell because of these tie junctions and it must actually pass through the membrane via the process of passive diffusion. Now, where exactly are these tie junctions found? Well, these junctions are found in epithelial tissues such as lungs, bladder, intestines, stomach, and organs. So these are the different types of organs that contain epithelial tissue that are basically connected via tie junctions. Now, let's move on to the second type of intracellular junction known as our gap junction. So, gap junctions are the connective tunnels that exist between adjacent cells. So, these types of tunnels, these types of channels or gap junctions allow the movement of different types of molecules and ions up to a certain size, usually up to 1000 Daltons. So, they allow molecules and ions up to a certain size to pass from one cell to the other cell. So these are our examples of our gap junctions. For example, if calcium ions want to get from this cell to this cell, they could move via these intracellular connections known as gap junctions. Now, what's a particular example of a cell that contains gap junctions? Well, it's basically a special type of muscle cell known as the cardiac cell, the cells found in our heart. So gap junctions are found in muscle tissues such as cardiac cells and there they play an important role in allowing calcium ions to move across our cells which basically propagates the action potential from one cell to the next cell and this ultimately causes the heart to contract and that creates our heartbeat which pumps our blood through the body and we'll talk more about this when we discuss the cardiovascular system and the heart. The final connection, the final intracellular junction that we want to discuss are desmosomes. So what exactly is a, is a desmosome and what is the purpose of the desmosome connection? Well, they basically attach themselves to intermediate filaments found in the cytoplasm of the cell that are composed of a protein known as carotene. Now, they hold, so desmosomes hold two or more adjacent, adjacent cells tightly together at a localized region. So, on this diagram, for example, this is one desmosome and this is the other desmosome. And notice these protrusions are our carotene intermediate filaments that are found in our uh, cytoplasm of the cell that are part of the cytoskeleton of that cell and they connect directly to these localized regions known as desmosomes. Now desmosomes themselves do not actually prevent the movement of molecules and ions such as water but desmosomes are usually found in combination with tie junctions. So if we have a tie junction and a desmosome found on the same side, that means the desmosome will basically hold the cell together while the tie junctions will not allow the movement of molecules and ions across our cells. Now, where exactly do we find our desmosomes? Well, desmosomes are located in tissue that undergoes a constant state of stretching and experiences a constant state of pressure. And one example is the skin. So when I pull my skin, what basically keeps the cells together are our desmosomes and what allows water not to get inside are basically the tie junctions. Another location of desmosomes in is the intestinal tissue and we'll see why they're important when we discuss the intestinal system. 
So basically in animal cells, there are three major ways by which our individual cells connect to one another. We have our tight junctions, which create a watertight connection and basically seals one side of the cell so that nothing can get past the side and around the cell. So things actually have to move across the cell membrane. And it also keeps the integral proteins from moving across to the other side of our cell membranes we have the gap junctions which basically are the channels or the tunnels through adjacent cells that allow the movement of small molecules and ions and we also have desmosomes which basically connect and hold those um, adjacent cells together via individual localized regions and these regions are known as desmosomes they connect directly to the cytoskeleton of our cell to the intermediate filaments found in a cytoplasm that are composed of a protein known as keratin.